Hey guys, today we are going to color another cute little succulent. And uh, if you haven't yet, take a moment to check out this other succulent coloring tutorial that I have shared here. Otherwise, we're ready to the verber. We're about ready, sorry, to get started. I'm talking all over myself today. So I've already gone ahead and selected likely colors for the succulent I'm referencing. And it's no easy feat for me to pull that up on the camera. So let me show you a photo of a photo. This is what I'm using for reference. And when I'm doing these little studies, I really prefer to work from reference. It makes it so much easier for me than trying to guess the colors. So there are lots of succulents in that image. I think I'm gonna go for one of the ones that has a good mix of green as well as purple. And I'm going to, hmm, it's not really as bright a green as I'd hoped. I am going to find a green that is bright enough for what I want. I might have to go pick again now. And we can't always trust the caps of our markers. So it's good to have a piece of scratch paper handy for swatching. Yeah, that's right. And I'm also going to, um, so with the way these succulents are, they tend to be purple at the tips as they mature. They kind of look like artichokes a little bit. So I'm going to use my green sort of lower down on each individual leaf. Then I'm gonna pull in a lighter green, in this case, milky white. And I'm not only gonna blend it a little bit, my intention isn't to blend it out entirely. It's just to blend it a little bit lighter because that's what the reference shows. So I'm going to go ahead and color all of those leaves like that. And I'm going to do that in time-lapse. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Next, I'm gonna use a very light, very hot red violet. This is um, Rose Petal in Blick Studio. And I'm going to go ahead and start coloring in all those tips that are going to eventually be purple. And I'm working with such a light color because it's really gonna help with the transition. Um, and I'm blending it into that very light green, what was it, like wax white or something? Yeah, Copic's G20, which is wax white, which is a very, very, very light green. It's almost a green yellow. And I'm um, just gonna kind of maybe work between the two colors if I have some trouble with blending, although it looks like there shouldn't be too much difficulty. And I am still working on that fluid watercolor paper, not fluid 100, we want the cellulose-based stuff and this has been inked with a Sailor Mitsuo Ida brush pen. Those are alcohol marker proof and waterproof. 
So they're one of my favorites to use in my studio. And while I don't normally like giving specific store plugs, especially if they're not a sponsor, and this company is not a sponsor, um, the only place I have found it outside of eBay would be through Jet Pins. So unfortunately, I am required so that you guys can find these pins because I my loyalty is to y'all first. Um, I am required to share that information. Especially because, you know, inks that are Copic marker proof and alcohol proof in a brush pen are kind of rare to come by. So I wouldn't want to withhold that from you guys. Let's see if I can't add some more points in here by pushing some of the ink back using this very light color. Looks like it's working okay. And I'm even gonna work some of that pink into that darker green. And you also don't have to use Copic markers for these sort of things. Prismacolors work really well. Shinhan Twin Touches work really well. Blix Studio brushes, like the one I'm using here, work really well. And the Blix are the cheapest. They are Dick Blix store brand alcohol markers. Now you do want the ones with the brush tips. Those are the best, in my opinion, because I do prefer brush tips. I know some people really hate them. <laughs> I've gotten that in my comments before. <laughs> oh, that is not a color that I want. So while this is still wet, I'm going to go ahead and go in with another purple and I'm going to blend between the two. So I need to find the pink I just had. As you can see, I'm blending between a Blick and a Prismacolor. and I'm letting the brush do most of the work. And I'm just going to do what I'm doing here for all of the little spiky nodules. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that in time-lapse. Okay, you guys can see that I added some points and they're sort of not blending in the way I want them to. So I went ahead and I grabbed that Sailor Mitzel Ida I was telling you guys about and I'm just going to formalize these points and then I'm going to have to let this dry for an hour in order to let the ink cure. I definitely thought it needed more points. All right, that's a little bit better. So I need to step away and let this dry for an hour in order to allow the ink to cure, which will prevent it from smearing. So I will see you guys in a bit. 
right guys, so that ink has had about an hour to cure and we're gonna go ahead and start working again on the green part of the succulent. And I'm gonna work back and forth between these three colors, wax white, apple green, and Nile green. But really you just want three uh, colors that are roughly in the same sort of progression. Um, so, you know, it doesn't have to be brand specific. And I am working on sort of reinforcing this green, but also blending it out a little bit so it doesn't look too obvious. And that's what the wax white is for, to help with some of the color blending. And I'm just going to do that all over this succulent. And I'm gonna do that in time-lapse because you guys really don't need to see. But as I blend, I blend out with the color I used previously, and that helps create smoother blends without pushing color away. Okay, so we've got that finished. So now I wanna work on darkening up some of those um, pinks and purples. So I've got a couple of Copics that ought to fit the bill. I'm actually gonna start with the one that's a little less suited because I can blend that out a bit. So I'm using sort of a violet, a bluish violet right now. And I'm using a lot of it on the edges, which I will now blend out with this RV in Peony, which is actually pretty dark. Now I'm going to try to delicately work Peony in here into the foreground leaves. And I'm going to blend that out with this Prismacolor Red Violet, which is really more of a pink. I'm kind of making a mess with this. This one was not as easy for whatever reason. And they seem to get lighter as they go down. So I'm gonna use less and less of the Red Violet as I work my way down the body of the plant. And then I'm gonna blend those out. And I'm also going to blend this out a bit with a lighter pink, although probably not as light as that first pink we were using. So I have here magenta. Let's do a swatch. Mm. It might be a little hotter than I want. Let's try. Hmm. Very berry might be too light. Let's find out. Yeah, not the right color. I guess magenta it is. Nice 
nice thing is we're going to go into this with watercolor a little later on. So some of what looks like color inaccuracies or just uh, kind of rough areas of color are going to be far less noticeable because I'm going to use the watercolor to help make the transition a lot better. And then I'm going to grab that light pink that I used way early on and try to blend it a little bit better into the green body of the leaves. And I'm pulling sort of from the center where there's a lot of that uh, darker color. hoping for a perfect blend like I said I'm just hoping to sort of ease that transition so that when I go in with watercolor it's a little bit easier to do and then I think finally I'm gonna go in with ocean green and just sort of darken some of the areas of overlap cast some shadows and build in some contrast. Before we take this to watercolor and to gouache and to maybe even color pencil. All right. So I'm going to pick up these markers and we're going to start working in watercolor. All right, guys. So we have cleaned things up a little bit and we have switched on over to the watercolor. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint a background on this the way I painted one on the other tutorial piece. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm activating some of my pigments so that they will go down a little bit easier easier to blend, etc. And I'm also going to activate some greens because I have a feeling I'm going to need those as well. As well as that dark red and this cherry red here. Maybe a little bit of the mauve. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and paint in a ground or the beginnings of a ground. And I'm using a size four Creative Mark Rhapsody Round made by Jerry's Artorama. But you don't actually have to use a natural brush for this since we've already done most of the hard work. But if you do have a nicer brush and it's handy, you can go ahead and pull that out. I would never tell you, well, there would be certain instances where I would tell you don't use an ice brush for this, like if we were applying for skid or something. But when it comes to just painting, I would never tell you don't use an ice brush if you have an ice brush. But if you don't have an ice brush, you don't really need to worry about it. You can even use a water brush at this stage if you want to. And for the most part, other than working around the stems, and leaves, I am doing long brush strokes and occasionally I'm flooding it with water just for some changes in tone. This makes things interesting. And then while it's still wet, I'm gonna go in with a darker color, in this case, Van Dyke Brown. And I'm just going to put in here and there some darker areas, just like you would see in real soil or dirt. Then go ahead with some sepia. And this is all going to sort of diffuse 
So you may want to go back into it later on. And we'll add a little bit of this very golden yellow ochre. Add some warmth here towards the front of the picture plane. Okay, so we're going to let that dry and we'll see what we have after it's dry. All right, guys, so that hasn't fully dried, but it has soaked in. I'm gonna go ahead with this cherry red and it is a whole beyond, whole, always throws me, Holbein cherry red. And I am going to go over all the petals with it. As you can see, it adds sort of a nice red uh, tint to what would otherwise be very cool. And then I'm gonna blend it out a little and this will help with some of that color transition that I was having a problem with. And I'm gonna do that for all of the petals and I'll just go ahead and do that in time lapse because you guys don't really need me narrating that. All right, so I've got that first layer of red on there. As you can see, it really dulled down the green a whole lot. I'm not going to concern myself with that too much right now. I'm going to focus instead on adding another layer of watercolor here to the foreground, adding some more details. I knew that adding the red would tone down the green, which is kind of a shame because in the photo, the green is this really nice, vibrant green. But um, I knew it was going to happen because red and green are compliments. So even though I can probably pop some blues and darker greens into the, the shadows and help bump up the contrast a little bit more, if I really wanted to add the green back or add some green back, I would need to do that with color pencil or opaque watercolor. And I'm not a big fan of opaque watercolor. And I'm not talking about gouache. I'm talking about opaque watercolor. You guys have probably seen me use it a couple times on this channel. Um, so I will probably just do it with color pencil or watercolor pencil once everything has had a chance to dry. So with these little paintings, sometimes they're more mixed media than others. With the last tutorial I did for you guys, it was really more water, I mean more um, alcohol marker with some hint of watercolor in there. This time the reverse seems to be true. It seems like I'm really utilizing the watercolor to help carry things. And the marker was really just there as a guideline. So with some naphthol red, I am going back in and I'm trying to be a little more dainty this time on the leaves. I'm just darkening them up. And in the end, we need to keep in mind that this is really a study. And studies are about learning and observing, making mistakes, taking risks, figuring things out. Sometimes you're successful, sometimes you're not. And I'm never ashamed to fail in front of you guys because I want to show you guys um, not only that failure does happen for artists, it happens a lot if you're a good artist, in fact, because you're producing a lot, you're taking a lot of risks, but also there are often ways you can uh, fix it or salvage it into something else. And sometimes the end result is better than what you would have gotten if you hadn't taken any risks at all. So I do want to encourage you guys to do studies and to take risks and to possibly fail. Um, you don't have to post it. You don't have to, if you don't, if you're not comfortable with people seeing it, you don't have to make that public. But I do try to make it public in order to inspire you guys and help you guys out. All right, so adding that red definitely did help with the contrast a bit. I will still add that darker blue and I will still allow this to dry and then go in with the lighter color pencil. But for now, I need to allow this layer to dry. All right, so 
The red is definitely not dry, but that is okay. It should facilitate some blending. So I've got a very green blue as well as some indigo. And I'm going to start painting it here in the shadows. And on the higher leaves, I'm using a lighter mixture of the color. All right, I'm going to let this dry. Then I'm going to do a little bit of shadow color where necessary. We'll let that dry fully and I'll pull out the pencil colors. All right, guys, so we're pretty much at the last stage for watercolor and then I need to let this dry thoroughly before we can switch over to color pencil. And for this stage, I am activating some purple because we're going to apply a shadow color. I am also um, activating some Payne's gray. And I am lightly brushing this color in where there is obvious overlap to help push the dimension of the forms. All right, and now I need to let this dry completely before I can add in the color pencil, which will hopefully pop some of those greens back in and make it a little bit more vibrant. So I'm gonna let this dry for a couple hours and then I will return. All right, guys, we're just about ready to finish this up. So I have pulled out not color pencils, but watercolor pencils. And I'm going to try and fix my color situation a bit, add some liveliness and brightness, and then blend it out just a little bit with some water, just to make sure it looks like it belongs. Because that's the whole point when you do corrections is you don't want it to be noticeable that you <laughs> did a salvage job. So sometimes that means blending a little bit and that's easier to do with watercolor pencils, I find, to blend out into other mixed media than it is with color pencils because I don't have to pull out Gamsol, I don't have to pull out any other sort of solvents. I don't have to use the alcohol markers again because sometimes you can get alcohol markers to melt your color pencils and blend them a little bit better. I don't have to do any of that. I just use a little bit of water to sort of meld the edges together. And you don't even necessarily have to do that if you have a really light hand. You can sort of build up those layers if you want. And I'm using two, I think they're both Carandosh. Yes, they are both super color soft. I dare say they were the ones sent in my December art snacks that I like so much. I added them to my regular rotation. And you may have to go back and forth between colors and creating layers and between blending and letting it dry. But you know, making something enjoyable, making something beautiful or pretty or whatever is also about sort of just spending the time and enjoying it. That's why I'm not a fan of those quick videos, quick tutorials on YouTube because I really want to instill a love of the craft. It shouldn't just be something that you 
or I feel like it's a shame if it only ever stays something that you are only doing it so you can whip it out in five minutes. It's part of the reason why I'm okay with making mistakes in front of you guys because I know it can be intimidating to get started because you think, well, you know, I'm just no good. I'm never going to get any better. But you will. You will get better. You just have to be willing to put the time in. And that's most people's problem is they are not willing to put the time in. And some of us do take longer than others. I'm one of those who took longer than others. Uh, anytime I, anytime I apply for like a art teaching sort of gig, I mention that I didn't improve for ten years, and the intention is not to belittle myself. My intention is to say, you know, I understand what these students are going through. I went through the same thing. I found methods that help me. I think I can find methods to help your students. I really have a lot to share and a lot of love and passion for this. So please let me share that with people who would like to learn. All right, so we've got it a little bit brighter. Might not be able to get it too much brighter, to be honest. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to a super color, soft color pencil. These are made by Derwent. They're some of my favorites. I prefer soft color pencils over hard color pencils. And I'm going to, just like in the photo that y'all can't really see, I'm going to go ahead and add a very light, faint outline around the leaves like I'm doing here. Some seem to have a little more than others. I'm also going to use this to add a little bit of light, maybe. I really, really don't want you guys to let making art intimidate you. There's so many good resources online and you know you can always ask me. I'll try to get to it, usually with a video. And I do have that outside blog at natosoup.blogspot.com. I've been doing that for a long time too. Um, but there are loads of great resources that are designed to, to help you get started. So you don't need to have been born an artist. You can decide to be one at any point in your life. Georgia O'Keeffe got a late start. You don't have to have gone to art school. Not that there's anything wrong with having gone. I went, but you don't have to go in order to become an artist. For sure, you don't have to go. That's sort of a, as a per person basis. Some people really, really grow and thrive best in an environment where they have some guidance, where someone can critique their work. And some people kind of grow and learn best in an environment that's completely free and open and they're able to explore without feeling like they um, have to produce. So, but there's so many resources out there. I don't ever want to hear you guys give me the excuse that, well, I didn't go to art school. You know, most of what I've learned doing this stuff wasn't learned in art school. I learned it researching for the blogs, so, you know, or because I wanted to learn how to do it. You think they taught me how to use Copic markers at SCAD? Are you kidding me? I had a friend who knew how to use them and she kind of showed me, but she didn't want me like uh, <laughs> ripping her off style wise. So I, I did a lot of a lot of experimenting and a lot of learning and a lot of studies from reference in order to learn how to use them. And the same watercolor, I mean, I was pretty much it was me and the Internet, you know, that, that was definitely not taught at SCAD. I, I was a comics major. I wasn't an illustration major, guys. Not that I'm at all disparaging comics, not in least. I'm just saying, like, you know, those sort of traditional media techniques. By the time I was at school, that school, they were kind of not being taught in class. It's like, cool if you wanted to learn how to use it, but you 
you kind of had to do it on your own time. So I'm using a little bit of white gouache just here and there to reinforce some of those highlights. And I think that little bump in contrast is really helping this come together more. So this is really, really a mixed media piece because we used so many materials to get to this end point. But I think the end result is looking pretty good. I was scared there. Most pieces have an ugly face. <laughs> I think I've mentioned that to y'all before, but most pieces, most art pieces do have an ugly phase. That's if you're actually taking risks. If you're not taking risks, then maybe you don't see the ugly phase anymore because you know, you know you're gonna get past it. Or maybe you know, you're not taking enough risks so you're not seeing the ugly phase. But if you're really growing, you will hit ugly phases and you have to keep pushing, you have to keep learning, you have to keep trying, you can't just give up. Because if you just give up, you're not gonna get any better. You're always gonna hit that wall and not know how to solve your problems. And that's why I always, if I encounter um, something that gives me trouble here on the channel, I try to show you guys how to problem solve, how to fix it. Um, even sometimes to the point of we'll redo it entirely from scratch because I didn't like how it looked. Um, and that is because I really want you guys to understand that that's okay. That most artists online even, even YouTubers, they may have had to record things three or four times in order to get it just right. You really don't know. So um, don't be too hard on yourselves. Don't be too hard on me. I'm just, just trying to do my best for you guys on a budget of pretty much a hundred bucks a month. You know, I'm not going to demonstrate fine art. This isn't fine art. It's cute. It's nice. You know, it's a good study, but it's not fine art. Um, and that's okay, because I'm not a fine artist. And I think fine art is kind of bull. Um, I want you guys to make things that you're going to enjoy, that are going to bring you pleasure, that you're going to be proud of. That you're going to use. all important to me okay I think we're finished with that and I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out so thank you guys so much for hanging out with me thank you for sticking through this to the end seeing it through with me sticking sticking through that ugly phase with me I hope you learned something I hope you felt inspired I hope something I said hit a nerve with you and is going to make you pick up your markers pick up your paints pick up your pencils and try for yourself try to make something of your own put away the stamps and just try now many of these techniques can be used with stamps I'm not saying that and I'm not trying to to rag on stampers, but I firmly believe in you. I think you can do it. I know you can do it if you put the time in. So um, please make my faith worth something, huh? Um, go pick up a pencil, pick up a sketchbook and just try. It's okay if you fail. No one has to see it. It doesn't make you any less of anything. In fact, it makes you more because you tried and you didn't necessarily succeed. And that's hard. That's something a lot of people can't bear to deal with. And so if you try and you fail, I'm still proud of you. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If it was helpful, if it was useful, if it was inspiring, please remember to leave a like. If you'd like to see something specific demonstrated, let me know in the comment section below. I'm always interested in what you guys have to say and what you guys wanna see. I am here to help show you, help inspire you, help get you drawing and painting and markering. So if there's something you need, just let me know. If you like what I do, if you want to help support it, there are a number of ways you can do that. One, you can go read the blog at natosoup.blogspot.com. There is so much good stuff over there, guys. You are seriously, seriously missing out. If you like this YouTube, you will love the blog. Right now, I am working on a massive 
watercolor basic series that is designed to get people from all walks of life painting. To be fair, the intention is painting for comics because I am a kid lit illustrator. I do have a book out, 7 Inch Kara Volume 1. You can pick that up at natasoup.com slash Kara hyphen comic or by checking me out at any of my shows. So yeah, my tutorials, my series do tend to be around, you know, watercolor for comics because I love comics. Um, but, you know, a lot of what I show you guys is applicable to any sort of illustration and can be used with stamps as well. So there's a lot you can go learn over there if you're interested in watercolor. I've also reviewed dozens, I'm not even kidding, dozens of alcohol markers. So if you're interested in those, that's another reason to go check out the blog. Everything is organized under series uh, subheadings. So hopefully you can find what you're looking for. And you can always leave me a question over there. I do have a couple from over the Christmas break that I do need to respond to, but I do try to answer those in a timely fashion. Another way that you can help me out is by subscribing to my channel and you that way you will get weekly updates. I do these sort of tutorials, tips, tricks, and reviews twice a week. So if you want to go diving through my backlog and see what other goodies I've got, I've got a lot of alcohol marker goodness and a lot of watercolor goodness up here. So if you're interested in these sort of tutorials, please go diving through my backlog and check some of those videos out they are great if you um, stick around for the in card I will link those playlists so that you can have access to them super easy another way you can help is by writing to the companies whose products I have used in these sort of posts videos what have you um, in this I use Prismacolor markers I use Copic markers I use Blick Studio brush markers Winsor Newton and Daniel Smith watercolors um, Utrecht which is Blick gouache and super color color pencils now usually those companies are very much not interested in you if you use more than one brand on your stuff so that does make me slightly less attractive to them but your good word goes a super long way another way you can help is to share this with your friends and family over on your favorite social media and the last way you can help is by joining me and my colony of art nerds over on the Patreon at patreon.com slash soup. And your $2 a month or however much you feel like contributing goes to helping me make more like this. So thank you guys again so much for watching. Have a great day. I hope I will see you really soon. Bye.